the Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Witchie podcast. How good is that? <laughs> Look, it can be very tricky uh, for everybody in a family oh to, get a, to, to get to, along. To get along. Do you guys ever Barney as a family? Do you ever argue the oh, Richies? Oh no, we all get on like a house on fire. Yeah. Oh look, there's always there's always it's, something going on, and my girlfriends and I will have a laugh, and we kind of try and one up. Mm-hmm. One, up, one up each yeah. other. Well, you wait for my story yeah. about what happened then. Especially when you're in a, all in a house together away. Like, I, I, I could pick... I think we take odds sometimes on, on how many hours in before there's a Barney yeah. in the family. Who normally starts it in yours, Fitz? Just mix, start to niggle a bit? And... Yeah, Mum and Dad will have a go at each other. Mm. Mum will have a go at Dad about not doing something around the house mm. and then Dad will fire up and say, well, I did this and, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm the, the hunter out. and... Uh, yeah. And, and then lot- it's on. A lot of these arguments, though, they've been going on for 20 yeah. or 30 years. Yeah, they have. You'd think the, the, the fire would mm-hmm. um, be oh, out no. of them by now. But yeah. the, the, at least with your own family, you tend to get on with things. Whether you should or not, you yeah. do. You, you move on. But when it's the in-laws or people that in your heart you feel as though you, you shouldn't have to deal with, they're not blood. They've, they've, they're either marrying your son, and that's exactly what this story is about. Um, if, you've, if you've got a story story to match this or whether your family tried to get you to ditch your partner give us a call 13 24 10 um this poor groom was marrying the woman of his dreams mm-hmm. it seemed and er- everyone loved her except for the family so they have the big big wedding and they actually get to the day now i don't even have any details around why they didn't like it, why they <laughs> i'll make them up is yeah. that what you're laughing at no, i've just... got no details so there's not much flesh to this story no but the dad and the rest of the family thought she's a stinker. No, well, you know what they thought. It doesn't really matter the reason. They just thought that he could do better. Right. And I do think that some families feel like that about that their... Maybe he was an only son. My son should be marrying this kind of woman. I don't know if she was a different culture sure, or she didn't sure. have the right job or she didn't live in the... Uh, the she's from the Gold Coast she, or something. She's Stay out of it. She's a Campbelltown girl. Like, but you need to learn. This is the thing. you got to make mistakes. you got to get your Hard broken. I hate it when families mistakes. getting. Yeah. Well, it, but it's not about money. That's but that's what this came down to. I mean, look, I do think that families will often put in a bit, bit of the hard yards and mm-hmm. just be really rude, or you know, not be very welcoming, or try and put roadblocks in the way of a relationship. But when <laughs> when the old man is offering the bride money to leave their son on the wedding night, which is what That's had happened. Huge. They Everybody was waiting for something to happen on the night. What, so the old man the, took her aside and said, I'll give you some cash. He didn't take her aside. I think they had a dance. You know, when they get onto the dance floor yeah. and they, they finally have oh. made it to the reception. They even asked the priest to remove the section from the um, the ceremony mm. that, uh, that has the priest offer to the congregation if anyone would like to object or if, you know, anyone's got a reason that this shouldn't go ahead, they didn't think they could keep their mouths shut, that it would be overflowing. So, you know what we'll do? Let's just take that bit out. People aren't going to be nervous about it. Mum and Dad can't stand up and say that we don't want to be married. So then Dad gets to the uh, reception, he's having a dance with the bride and says, and and, I mean, I I thought there was a zero off the end of this. Yeah, yeah, give us us a figure here because I love Tonight. Well, it must have been in the UK, this story, because mm. it's only £4,000. Must have wow. really loved him. It was, well, no, she didn't take the money. She didn't. And you know what, which I was not expecting in this story, the man stood by his wife and, like, really? supported his wife over the mum and dad, which would have been highly humiliating, mortifying to the poor mother. You know what mums are like with sons. Do you know, I had a mate and in a similar situation to this, Kate, where he took his best friend aside and said, mate, I know you're getting married. I just need to say this. Mm. She's no good. Full stop. Oh, hang on. She who was, no good. Who, who, who was mate the best mate? mate. Oh, was mate, the best mate. mate. Don't marry her. And he then turned to him, his mate, and said, you know what? You're uninvited to the wedding. <gasps> So they then got married and stopped talking. Friendship over. So Seven years the, later. Yeah. Hey, mate, could we catch up? It's yep. over. You were right. No good. Right. She's yeah, but, no good. Yeah, but he Seven. wasn't right. Seven years. I mean, that's the average length of one, isn't it? A marriage. <laughs> You're on to your well, second it's... by the eight. 
we're talking about families who get involved um, in your relationship and maybe they've gone as far as trying to make you break up with someone mm-hmm. because they're not good enough for yep. you. We know it's going to turn sour or we know X about Y and all of that. Um, one woman uh, was offered $4,000, which I didn't think was very much money to leave, Four the, to walk. leave the groom on the wedding night, uh, but it, it didn't work out that well, way. Well, I've told this story before, Kay, but in my family it was a situation my grandfather didn't like who my auntie had married. So he said, how much will it take? And he took the money. Or and a blank check. And the th- thing was, they went away. F- they went away for the weekend. Came back and he was gone, and she didn't yeah. know why he'd left. And he even nicked the silverware on the way out the door. Oh, he's in oh. the Bahamas, mate. Is he's he? in yeah. the Bahamas yeah, he was an with another beautiful woman. So, Let's and did to- the fam? Sorry, did the family ever own up to the, the, no, the exchange? No. Oh. Tommy, cut that out of any podcast or anything. Yeah, any, absolutely. Any, I'll leave that in. No any worries. Any future audio collections? We've got yeah. grandfather on the line now. How much was it, Dave? Oh. No, Grace has given us a call from. Borkham Hills. Grace, did your family tell you to ditch your partner? Uh, yeah, they kind of, I guess. Um, my So my husband and I have been together for about 10 years before we got engaged. And once we were engaged, planning the wedding, everything kind of just changed, I guess, with the in-laws. And they just kind of wanted to try to control everything. Yeah. Um, and so... When on the wedding day, we've been together almost 12 years to that day, yeah. and uh, they, uh, well, the, my father-in-law pulled my dad aside and said, you know, we feel like we're losing a son and not gaining a daughter. What? Wow. On the wedding day? What did yeah. your dad say, Grace? Oh, my dad was kind of just like, well, what do you want me to do about it? Yeah, you know? and you've had 12 years to bring this up. Well, that's do- right. Um, what's, your, what's your relationship now with him, Grace? Well, since then, my husband and I have had a baby who he's almost eight months old now. And, yeah, it's, oh, at the moment we have no contact because it's just just been constant, you know. Oh, yeah, my God, it's, Christ. It's, it's too problematic. You know, I think you need to get to a point where if you realise that your kid is happy, then you be happy. Exactly right. Your well said. That's chosen such a beautiful... That person. Thank you so much, mate, and possibly the yeah. best thing I've said so far today. Um, if your child is happy, then you've got to be happy for your child and be happy for the family. Yeah, but that mm. all sounds I've very spoken, sane. I've spoken, Justin and Mount Drew, what happened with the in-laws? So me and my wife have been married for a couple of years, um, and we came out to Wolf Holly. Uh, we but didn't you, let the in-laws know about it. Sorry, sorry, for right a, up. You you were what? Sorry, Justin? Uh, me and the wife were polyamorous. Oh. Polyamorous. So that means... Yeah. So we have another girlfriend. Oh, oh and great. does she live okay. in the house? Uh, yeah, well, we all live together. Me, the wife and the girlfriend, we all live together. Do and you, we yeah, didn't yeah, tell yeah. the in-laws about it. Right, okay. what was their reaction, Justin? Well, because my wife's family are God-fearing Christians. They did not like that idea so much that we were corrupting annoying, their grandchildren. It? Yeah, annoying. Uh, oh, because do you uh, have children? Kind of, yeah, well, me and my wife have got a son and daughter. Okay. And yes. the in-laws were like, um, we're not happy with this. Uh, if you do not break up with a girlfriend, we will do everything in our power to... Get custody of your children. God, that oh. can be boring, can't they? You know what I mean? Just when you <laughs> so want to ju- have a, a wife and a girlfriend. Justin, where's it all at at the moment? Well, what's happening at the moment? Are you all still together? Oh yeah, we're we're all together, fine and happy. The wife kind of snapped on her parents and kind of told them to uh, pull ahead. Go on, yeah. <laughs> hey, Justin, can I ask the sleeping arrangements? Three in the bed can be crowded. Is that how it plays I out? I to the lounge. Right, so you're on the lounge and the two girls sleep in your bed. <laughs> Pretty much. And when you decided to um, welcome someone else into the relationship, was it 100% your idea or how did the topic come up? It was actually the wife's idea. So, um, is it one of her yeah. friends, Justin, or had you met her, this other woman? No, it's actually our girlfriend is our mutual friend that we've known since primary school. This is amazing. Oh, wow. Right. And did she have a partner at the time when this came up? Uh, no. Okay. Crazy. So, you so do, you, do you have kids now, Justin, or do you want to have kids? So me and the wife have children. Uh, the girlfriend doesn't want to have children, and yeah. we're completely fine with that. She she loves our children as well, so okay. everything's all and, mutual. 
How can I get a question in? And because I've never seen the two of you clamber to ask questions, Fitzy and Ripper. How Just old are you? Work the, out the setup. Oh, I know you are. <laughs> You've never been here. He is prick. Um, and how old are the children? So our daughter is four, and our son is six. Okay, and do they know the setup? Have you sat down and spoken to them about it? Yeah, they're completely fine. They um, certain days they call her mum or <laughs> call her by her nickname, which is Cheeseburger. <laughs> Big Mac was taken, was it? Can, no, uh, well, it's a different story back when we were younger and we were reckless and we got on the green a bit and the girlfriend decided to eat 20 cheeseburgers and puke them up. Awesome. <laughs> Just awesome. I love Australia. Can I ask you, and I don't know if you can say this on air, who do you like, who do you love more, do you think, or who do you like Rather more? Oh, and yeah, why... Yes. why why is that? Uh, from a male's point of view, any woman that could say, let's get a girlfriend, you love her more. Yeah, but can I ask, Justin, I see that oh, on, on Facebook. Oh, no, you there, but Justin. Can I ask, Justin, um, I've lost my question. I was trying to work out. Um, it's okay. I, we can get him back tomorrow no, when no, you no. can have a think about questions no, overnight. I just, I'm trying to establish, if you want someone else purely just for the bedroom, right? That's one thing, but it must be more than that. You like the idea of having another girlfriend at home? So, yeah, it's more of the happy thought. Like, you can have a girlfriend for the bedroom if you're both interested in that. That's fine. But if you're looking for more intimate, more loving, more hard woman, then that's what you want to look for. And what, there, there, there has to be a level of jealousy there, though, Justin, between the girls sometimes, is there? Actually, no, there's literally none. So if you go off to the bedroom with the girlfriend, your wife is happy with that and she's just watching NCIS on the TV? <laughs> One go as far as NCIS, but yeah, pretty much. Okay, glad you know. Wow. Like, there's, times, there's times I've come home and i found them too, and I'm just like, I'm going to the lounge room. Wow, this, I mean, you can understand where a family's coming from here, but like Whip said with his motivational quote before, as Thank long you. as your son is happy, you know, yeah. or your daughter is happy, <laughs> um, that is you've got to support them, don't you, Kate, well, in this situation? Yeah, you do. Tom, are you telling uh, yes, me we're moving do, on I, from this topic? I think it's tricky. Are we not going to ask for more polyamorous relationships? No, oh, you can. Do you have any questions left? Well, no, I, I, I do. His I want... mind, he looks boggled. <laughs> because the ca- How many did the candy man have on the Gold Coast? He had eight. But they, they <laughs> but, weren't serious. They were, they were... Uh, more physical. Yeah. And this is the thing. How long is it going to last for? You oh, would have to... It's a fleeting thing, isn't it? Well, it would have to. For the candy man or Justin? Actually, I would like to ask Justin yeah, please, that. Kate. Justin, how long have, this, have there been three adults in the home? Uh, going on three years. Three years. Three so it is long. It, it's long, long term. Do you want to introduce yeah. another one, Justin, or is that it? Like no, no, it's too much of a headache. Yeah, yeah. too much. Of a so oh true. yeah, do I you, know do the you, ladies. Do you, do you, far out. Do you oh, split God. the Do you split the bill three ways, Justin? Like uh, bills at home. So no. me and the wife work. The girlfriend yep. looks after our children if they're not at school. Right. You don't have to pay the nanny. Oh, well, it, it could be. I mean, there's a cost of living. Well, it's not bad, is it? Right. Did this happen because of COVID? Uh, no. Because yeah, well, you Justin, know when there weren't those, those rules where you couldn't see anyone and then you... Yeah, but you, you could have one friend over or something, You could move yeah. a friend in and then before you know it, you're all... You all, all in love it. each you're other. All touching Justin's each other. in the running for uh, Taylor Swift in Tokyo, live in Tokyo. The thing is, you can only take one with oh, you, Justin, no. so you've got a huge decision <laughs> if you win that Let's one. Get another girlfriend. Oh. I'll just send them both. Yeah, well, we'll see. Or well, well, the girls can go, and you can stay at home and look after the kids. This is the Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie podcast. Kate, you know what? It's just a good feeling in your heart <laughs> when you know when there's something going on, and there's a surprise within the team, and one of the team members has no idea what we're talking about. Yeah, a big surprise, Fitz. Hmm? You didn't mention what a big surprise okay. it is okay. for for Whipper. And I know it's not your birthday. And it's not I my mean, birthday. Christmas. Yeah. We've just had Christmas. We don't so. do surprises. <laughs> This is something to do with fireworks and New Year's Eve. Oh, no. Oh, it could be repayment for that, actually. We we got together and realised that you do talk a bit of a, a big game. And 
And I don't know if for 2024 you're going to be off to Centennial every oh, yeah, Arakan, Tuesday yeah, at game. 4 o'clock Huge um, to game. do Arakan. Huh? Massive um, game. You might need to mix it up. That is the key for exercise. It's it's the key for staying fit. <laughs> What's the and, trick? And agile. I'm not going to tell you now. Am I on the rower? There was a huge event in Sydney, right? And we want to get you involved with it. And when we say huge, we mean enormous. Ma- oh, no, we don't mean enormous. We mean massive. So coming, Commonwealth Games. Coming oh not that massive. Or bigger than actually bigger <laughs> bigger than the Commonwealth okay. Games. So what do you got? Um, what do you got, Richie? Uh, we're gonna put a blindfold on you. We're gonna take you down to level four and all will be revealed. Oh, this is a good idea. Don't isn't be nervous. It? We're gonna do that now. Don't be nervous. You gotta change your clothes. Are you everything alright, Tommy? Yeah, everything go. am I safe? Let's do it. Here we go. I can tell by Tom's face he's excited because, Kate, you've got something going on that I do not know anything about. Well, I I didn't... Cameras are rolling, all right. I didn't do it on my own. We just wanted to organise a big surprise for you. You're a very important member of the team. My birthday's in September. I know, but you know what? None of us could wait until September. And this had a little bit to do with timing and whether we could get this massive surprise into the building. So if you could just... How big is it? (laughs) Um, big surprise? Yeah. My, oh, bigger than you. Hmm? Only just, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Um, if you pop that on... Troy Savan. We have to go down... Red Room? Or much bigger than Troy Savan. OK. Put that on. We'll All go right. down to this level four. Mm-hmm. Blindfold? Do I, need to, do I need to hold your hand or are you fine Blindfold to make your way? Blindfold is on. Come on, out and to the right and down to the left. OK. okay. You, Tom, you get yeah, over yep. that side. Okay, I'm going just behind. stand here. Okay. Face that way. Sam Smith? Because the surprise is out here. <laughs> Oh, I didn't know this many what have people you done? worked it. No. <laughs> Where's Troy Savan? No, it's, it's, it's not Troy Savan. We wanted to we wanted to get you a big surprise. You yep. were talking about this on air um, last week, yep. and I didn't think you were completely respectful. Oh my so gosh. we thought we That's would um, get a, a, the biggest surprise ever in this building. Yep. Face that way. Where? Can you believe it? We. Right here, right in front of you now, two of the best sumo wrestlers what? the world has to offer. Michael? Whoa, how are you? I was, I was just saying last week how great you guys are and how much um, I love the sport and, you know, you guys are right. You guys are... Do more, it's more than just big guys pushing each other is what I was saying. So it was good, uh, good to chat about the sport. Do you want to have a go? Good. Do no, you want to have a go? No. Just rip, should we have no. a go? I don't, um, okay, so the rules, you correct me if I'm wrong because I figure you have you done know, this a lot more. I don't know. <laughs> One minute? No, no uh, rules. Oh, no rules? Like, oh, rules. Yes. I'm just... Should I step out? I'll let you guys... Yeah, stay and watch. OK, yeah. I, and I've got the... I have a big horn huh? that I'm going to do the, um, the timing. It's getting weird. <laughs> OK. Whipper has chosen his, op- yeah. what, his opponent. They're squatting hands to the ground. The other guy... Ah! Oh, Jesus. Whipper looks small. Thank <laughs> you.
Well, well done, Whip. You got absolutely smashed by our sumos. The video is going up right now on our Instagram account. Guys, jump back into the studio and can you bring the sumos up here? I need to know how much these guys eat in a day. Back in the studio, <laughs> slowly putting the pieces together after we had a bit of a surprise and, on the show. And, we, and your uh, clothes back on, a, slowly we, putting your gear back on. We had a bit of a laugh, we, didn't we? <laughs> yes. Where are they you've, now? Well, they're Actually outside met, the studio. Yeah, well, you've met okay. your match when well, it comes to weight and hair, I've, really, well, haven't I've, you, I've with never, this guy? I've never felt thinner. You were I've dwarfed. Never. I'm, I'm I, actually going to th- so throw that mm-hmm. out there. He was sweaty and we were rubbing. Yeah, bring the guys in. Okay. Come Where are we going to... Here's the team. The unit. Yeah. 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 All right. No, no chair. No, no chair. chair. Get rid of the chair. Oh, what a battle that was. My God. Anyone could have won. Can I ask, <laughs> what's your background? Where are you from? Your origin? My name is Romil Gazar. I'm the most sexy sumo uh, wrestler. Mm. So handsome guy. Yeah. With, with curly hair. Wow. With brown eye. Wow. Beautiful. Beautiful. And, Almost 195 centimeter tall. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and luscious what is beard. Any fat guy can make food. I'm from Egypt originally. So if I can feed myself, I can feed anyone. This is so. true. This is true. <laughs> can, I, can the other sumo wrestler, can you introduce yourself to, to Sydney as well? Thanks, sir. My name is Mindy. I'm from Mongolia. From Mongolia. Yeah. Are there many uh, Mongolians who sumo wrestle? Oh uh, yes, this Japanese top, uh, Japanese for some professional sumo top guys. Every guy is Mongolia. Wow, and he's single too. He's single as well. And, and, yeah. uh, and can you cook? Yes, for yeah, Kate. Good. For Kate, she's good for cooking. <laughs> single good looking, for cooking. looking for man. Can yeah. you dance? Very, very good. Yeah. Out of can ten, you? out of ten, how do you think the the performance went from Whippa? You know, I just live, let you live because you have family. Oh, thank, you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for sparing me for my family. Can I? Can we go back to some of the basics? Yeah. How long have you guys been doing sumo wrestling for? Since he was uh, eight years. Oh. And what about yourself? Oh, wow. uh, I do sport almost like thirteen years. Thirteen years. Okay. And how old are you? I'm thirty-seven. Thirty-seven. Yeah. And how much do you weigh? Between me and you. 240 kilogram. Oh, 240. that is amazing. 240 well, I, kilograms. I, yeah. I'm 97 I, kilos. I'm skinny, so I try to get more yeah. weight, you know. What is the outfit that you wear? It's called a mawashi? Is it a mawashi? Yeah, it's the belt. It's made from uh, cotton fabric. It's yeah. really, really strong. Mm. And the size, it depends about uh, how much your weight. Right. Okay, can I, yeah. can I ask... Has the Mawashi ever fallen off in battle? Because <laughs> it doesn't look like no it's undies. holding on too too well no. to the body. And does it doesn't it fall have off? A, it doesn't have a fixture, does it? It's all kind of uh, hand. Tight. It's like fisherman's knots. <laughs> you know? No, no, no. It's really strong. And I know this is. Oh, a, I love it. You've answered this question many times. What do you eat in your day? Oh. Uh, I take between seven thousand and nine thousand. I am I am on diet, so yeah, I try to watch <laughs> to watch what I <laughs> seven what you, what? to nine thousand calories a day. Yeah. Can I ask a question? And I don't want this to seem um, insulting in any way. Is it quite hard to use a, a toilet on an aeroplane? <laughs> <laughs> no, we be when we stand up, or we we go to open area like back tree or anything like yes, that. Yes, but on an aeroplane. Um, oh, this is yeah. the most worst one. Yeah. Oh, I sit yes. next to window too, so I can do it. I open the window. <laughs> <and> the <laughs> so when you when you get something in your front window of your car, this is me. <laughs> oh, you're too funny. <laughs> that is well, unfair. Romy, Mendy, thank you so oh, much for coming in. If you want to follow the updates of the Sumo Wrestlers, they're on Instagram at Sumo International. They've had an amazing time here in Australia. If you want to see Whip get thrown around the Sumo stage, you can go and check it out on our Instagram account right now. We know how busy you are, boys, so thank you very much for coming in. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. The Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie Podcast. The absolute worst stories of cheating. Okay, I'm really keen I, to hear this. Okay, Me so too. I've got I've got permission off a mate to talk about this, but I've had to change names. So let's say his name is Garrett from Garrett? Eastern uh, Garrett, Garrett from Eastern Creek. Okay, okay. I, is his name Garrett? No, it is now. Okay. No, it's not. But he's given me permission to talk about this. 
Married. Two kids. Garrett is. Garrett is. Mm. Mm-hmm. Rings me the other night. Emotional. I've split with my wife. Okay. Went on a family holiday to the Maldives together. Not cheap. Congratulations. Very expensive. When did they go? Um... This was at the end of last year. You want me to stop asking questions, don't you? Yeah, I do. Okay. I can't believe this. His wife is a scuba diver, right? Mm -hmm. Loves scuba diving. That's one of the main reasons they went to the Maldives. On the first day, she said she's booked herself into a scuba dive. She goes out for the whole day. He looks after the kids. Yeah. um, And she comes home and she goes, oh, my God, an amazing experience. The water was so clear. I saw so many... So much sea life down there. It's unbelievable. Convinces her husband, can I then book in another two sessions on this week, one week holiday? Because I loved it so much. And he said, you know what, honey? You love this. I'll look after the kids. You go for another two days. It's a lot of scuba air on one week. Um, on the final, this was the final day before they left. She's out scuba diving and he decides to go to the diving office at the resort to see what time she's coming back. So he gets there early. He walks into the office and he walks in on her with the diving instructor. What movie is that? There's a movie where that happens. While he's looking after his two kids. And he's being considerate to go and find out what time she's back because possibly he's booking their final night dinner yeah. by the pool. She breaks down, cries her eyes out, runs back, runs after him back to the room. Hard he said, we are going... Well, they're going home the next day. He said, I'm going home. Don't talk to me. I can't do this. She then breaks down and says to him, after knowing this guy for three days, I think I love this guy. What? Is After this a, three days. Is this a real life story this that is, happened at the end of last year? This is a real life story. Did she? He not then re- has to, the, he said, I, he goes, Fitz, I then had to, on the plane, I had to sit with her, with <gasps> the kids, knowing that I'm going to be packing up and I'm going to stay somewhere else when I get home. It's all oh over. How it's old are the dusted. kids? God, they're, uh, they'd be like six and four. Okay, so they're little. Mm. They're unaware, relatively. And I just thought, is that not... What is going through your fam- mind? Do you know, it would have been hard to understand too because I assume it went something like... I'm leaving you. I'm in love with another guy. Because she had a mask and snorkel on. Um, her tears would have been filling up the mask at the time. And So uh, the, the, the oh, okay. thing is, she's gone diving on the first day, maybe the second day, but the third day they didn't even go diving. Oh, he's, diving. Stayed. The, he's walked into the diving office early to find out when they're coming back. And she was in there with him all day. Okay, so this. Ha- okay, how how, how does it happen? How does that happen? How do you fall head over heels in love with someone within a very short period of time on a family holiday, um, a holiday that everybody's been yeah. looking forward to when you know that your partner and your two children are just up the walkway? Just- These moments scare me. These moments scare me because they threaten what you know as a normal relationship. Yeah. Because, Kate Ritchie, the question... Has got one. It's hard to say. She doesn't like diving, um, <laughs> but she may take up scuba. I'm not sure at this stage. But, but, her, but, but the bloke that she's with okay. does. Kate, can <laughs> I just... She can learn to love anything he loves. Well, that's true, yeah. depending on how they want. Kate, here's the thing. Do you suggest that this relationship is in trouble already. Of course it is. So there's a breakdown in the relationship and then you just needed that trigger to drag her away don't, from it, which became the scuba instructor. Don't, or don't do you think this is a happy marriage, but the power that this guy had over her is something that could happen to anybody? No, I don't think anything about it is... is um, and I, I no. mean, this is very hard for me to comment on, if it's because this is a, a friend of yours, so I, and, I'm, and I don't know this bloke, and I'm sure he's heartbroken, but I would imagine if you go on hold holidays and within three days you're saying you're completely in love with someone else and you've spent a day in the office with him while your family's up the road yeah there it's not and not all is well no I, but you're see, already out of the relationship in your head and you're really looking for something surely we've got a call from annie in hurstville we're talking about the worst <laughs> stories of cheating what do you got for us annie Hey, good morning. Yeah. Hey. Uh, so while I was married, um, we were living in Bangkok and my 
now ex-husband, he used to go to the Philippines on business. And um, usual thing, off he went on a business trip. Yeah. And then I get a, a pocket dial. And I'm thinking, oh, it's 6 a.m. in the morning. You know, what, what's going on? And he's in a taxi with one of his mates. And he says, hey, mate, shall we get more Viagra? Oh, my gosh. I said, uh, hello? And he went, oh, oh, oh. Um, and then the phone went dead. So that pretty much confirmed what I always knew. But it was that, yeah. you know, and then you try to deny it, emphatically deny it. That's what was his no excuse? Has your number. <laughs> what was the excuse, though, when, I mean, d- he, he, you must have said, I, I heard you talking about Viagra. Yeah, no, no, he says, no, that wasn't me. I said, but how can it not be you? It's your number. It's your number. That's, You're ringing me. Did he? Res- yes, you've pocket dialed me. So it's almost like the universe saying... All right, girly girl, time to get a move on. Yeah, you need (laughs) this information. Did he resort to telling you that he was, in fact, having a hot love affair with his friend that he was in the back of the Uber with? (laughs) No, that was a guy friend. Yeah, well, we don't know. know. So did you find out, Annie? Annie, did you find out? Yes, and I did. He eventually admitted it because then everything else started coming out as well. You know, when you standing up against a picture and you start stepping back, you suddenly see the picture for what it is. Yeah. So, oh um, yeah, that was just one of multiple, multiple indiscretions. Oh, Annie. But gosh. like I say, Universe said, here we are, I'm going to put this right up against your nose so that you can what? now wake up. Okay. Yeah. All right. Fatini's given us a call from Bankstown. What happened to you, Fatini? So, basically, I was seven months pregnant on my second child, our second mm-hmm. child, and he used to work overseas, Pacific Holiday, Pacific Islands. Um, the project manager and came back and I was cleaning getting ready to wash his clothes mm. found a long piece of hair which wasn't mine yep. did some digging opened up his wallet photo of another girl in his wallet why well, he kept that lazy. in his wallet lazy in his wallet a photo so Fatini you then took the photo did you and said what's all this about or how did it play yep. out yeah yeah I was we were living at my parents house waiting for a property to be built and basically said, what's this? He was having an affair. I said, do you love me? He goes, um, no, I said, well, do you love me? And he goes, I love you, but I'm not in love with you. I love mm. me, yeah, that's a Cop problem. out, yeah. And then basically he said, oh, um, I don't know what to do, whether I should stay with you with the kids uh, like 16 and 18 and then leave you or, you know. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's yeah. confronting. It's oh, so quite what, cold. So, yeah. so what, you just booted him straight away for tea? Well, yeah, my, well, <laughs> basically I said, well, can you leave? Because we're living with my parents. He wouldn't leave the house. He basically made me move into a new apartment and he left. Because I had my son was two and my daughter was oh my six God. months old. Man. Oh, man. Oh, Fatini. Um, Fatini, I hate to yeah. say it, he's a shocker. He is. Yeah. yeah That's he ended not up marrying fair. the other 13-year the other d- younger than him. Oh, she wow. She's 13 okay. years younger than him. Are they still together? No, they had three kids. She did the dirty on him, and he ended up raising the other three oh. kids. But never, never saw his first kids. Maybe Fati- once or twice. Oh, Fatini. Fatini, that stuff. What about your love life? Have you got someone special now? Um, on and off, been been a bit hard. Um, yeah, had yeah. to raise the kids. Yeah, of course. On my own. Yeah, your priorities yeah. Are, are, are different. Yeah. Traffic yeah. dating, Tommy <laughs> Fatini. You're oh, a very yeah. strong woman, Fatini. Let's go to Coralie now from Seven Hills. Tell us about your boyfriend. Oh, hi, how are you? Um, Yeah, I was with my last boyfriend for about seven months, which I thought was my boyfriend. Um, We spent the Saturday night together. The Monday morning, he ghosted me. Um, I got on on his Facebook, and there he was introducing the love of his life and his new family to the world. And I commented saying, but you're you're with me on Saturday night. And the next minute, another seven females popped up saying that, yeah, he's been sleeping with them for the last seven months as well. He's a busy boy, Cora. Yeah, he's got his full diary. He was a very busy boy, he was. And I was like, yeah, the more we stalked him, the more we found out. How did you meet him? Oh, just on a dating site. Oh, oh. Coralie. So how many did you find out all together did he have on the side, Coralie? Eight. Oh. What a stinker. But how, the, yeah. This is the whole thing about these Training. people. They're just so, mm. uh, like, blasé about Don't things. Care. Like, if, if you are out there and you've got all these people that you're hooking up with who actually think you're in a relationship and then you're just willy-nilly posting about your yeah. family that mm. you're in love with as well, it, it, it's so entitled. And, and, and what did he say when you confronted him, Coralie? Well, when I finally got to confront him, he told me that, yeah, I deserve someone that 
who actually loves me. Yeah, well, and that's what he said to everybody else. And oh, he's such a oh, good guy. He's a so good man. he's really thoughtful. He's a yeah. good man like that. It sounds like it was just physical. Elise in Parramatta, tell about your mum. Tell us about your mum's friend. Yeah, hey, so mum has this friend. Let's call her Annie, yep. right? Yep. So Annie is happily married, um, or was, has three pretty much adult kids, right? Yep. Annie walks home one day to find her husband with her mother. What? What the hell? What? Mums, this has been mums. going on for close to three years. Annie's mum with Annie's husband. Oh, what was mum's excuse, Elise? What did mum say about they this? They were in love. They loved each other. Oh, Annie had never... to basically... And he had to file for bankruptcy. Like, the whole thing, oh just God. kind of everything just started to unravel. Well, that will never happen with Lisa and her mum. <laughs> Lisa what? and her mum? That just would, that would never happen. That would be Lisa and your mum or your dad. That's you hooking up with Deb. That's right. I'm just saying now, for the record, that would never happen. Lisa will never come home and find Deborah and I involved in some sort of hot oh. nude rumble. What about the other way? Could, could there be a chance that John and Lisa... Highly unlikely. The age of 75, I'm not sure he's up for it. Would you have a vo- would you have a little vomit? Oh, if you came home, it's not like what what I, kind of oh physical gosh. reaction do you have when you walk? You put the key in the door mm. and you walk down the hallway, and then you're in the lounge room, and on the couch is is, is your parent and yeah. your partner. Are you who are you more disappointed with, Mum? Your parent. Like what would you, you what would you say to Heather? What, <laughs> what would you say to Heather? You walk in and there she the is, nude in the kitchen. So, okay, quite, no, quite stop. on set. Can you stop? Because I know mum's in, mum's in the car right now and most likely with my daughter. It's so. not what it looks like. <laughs> What's the first thing you would say to Heather? <laughs> I'd say, should I put the kettle on? <laughs> Do you know, can I tell you something? Uh, a yep. mate of mine, a mate of mine not long ago, <laughs> he was at home and the cleaner was there. And they started talking about intimacy. The cleaner says, oh, it's been a while for me, I really miss it. He says, it's been a while for me as well. The next thing you know, right there in the kitchen, it is on for young and old. Is this guy, it, was he in a relationship? No. Well, no, this he is. is. He's in a relationship. He's got about four girls on the go. He's a bit of a shocker. This is, but is this a friend of yours? Story? Yeah. Yeah. What? And I just... I'm always fascinated how these moments which seem random, like a mother involved or a cleaning lady, how it actually gets to that point of going, I woke up this morning and this was a regular day. I had my wheat bix for breakfast. I read the paper. I checked my email. And the next thing you know, I'm on the lino in the kitchen getting it on with the cleaner. I know, because... You, you, like... You think you live happen? an interesting life, but it, yeah, uh, some, that stuff isn't happening. There's some um, no. there's stuff going on out there, wild and crazy. Put down the Mr. Shoe. There's some nymphos out there, isn't there? Oh well, I don't gosh. think it's even that. I think it's people looking for connection. Mm. I don't I think, think it is, people, Kate. They're I just think, bored. No, I think people are, you know, are desperate for connection and deeply, deeply, deeply unhappy mm. in, their own, <laughs> in their own lives. And before you know it, you can't fake chemistry. If you're standing, how many people have got cleaners and they never fancy them at all? No, no. no. I mean, Bum Bum's done a bit of work at our place. It was a cleaner. What? Her name's Bum Bum. And I've never, ever looked at her and thought... Well, you've never touched Bum Bum wet. No. No, I haven't, Tom. What does Bum Bum do in your house? Oh, upstairs, where, downstairs. Where is she from? She is from uh, Malaysia. Did you... Okay. You sure it's not okay. boom boom? Yeah. It, and you just say me, bum bum. Say bum, bum say it. Tom. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie podcast. Guys, lucky enough to get an invite to ye old Australian Open. Uh, Rocket Rod Laver. Went to see Med, Medvedev. Med, Medvedez. And you're a massive tennis fan, so this would just would have Mate, been an I, absolute treat for you. Great people watching yesterday at Centre Court at Rod Laver there. Um, I mean, the tennis is one thing, and good on you, fellas. Great display of um, physical activity. Get that ball back over the net. Um, <laughs> mate, I was in the year seven A's. I had a Prince Precision. 
I was a great tennis player oh, back in the day. Can we, um, t- Tommy? Can you please Don't send Lizzie and Che um, no, no, the photo no, no. of Whipper? Yeah, no, no, when no, no. His, his when little he, white shorts and his Deodoras have... and his little white. Oh, oh mate, that, that was my favourite hard rock cafe T-shirt. <laughs> so don't pick on me, but I was a weapon on the court. Do you know what the tennis? I was a great server. And Kate, you know what the the coach used to say to Mum? He's not bad, but I would describe him as heavy footed. Oh, yeah. Which equals fat and slow. Mm. Um, that's all right. We move on. It's not my sport. Great to see some of the stars there, though, yesterday. Um, if I can drop a couple of names. Shane it. Jacobson in the crowd. Oh, oh. love Shane. Very funny, um, man. Was Kate he to, sitting in front of or in front of you or behind you? Just Where to was the your side. chair? Well, and, and you're talking about social ranking at the tennis. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I think he was row five. I was row four. Row one though was made up of Kate Sobrano. Oh, yes, young boys are my um, weakness. Those bedroom eyes. Um, John Stevens was there as well. Yes, from uh, Noiseworks. Noiseworks Love did a Johnny. bit of work with In Excess as well. He was front row. Okay. Gosh, there's got to be bigger Anyone? names. Anyone in their 20s? <laughs> <laughs> Troy Savan was there. No, he wasn't. No, he wasn't. I'm just filling that one in. Okay. Um, what was exciting, though, to look over, and I would have hated to have been sitting behind him, but great to see Red Foo turning up to the tennis. Well, he's a huge now, tennis fan and can play tennis himself, Red Foo. I can thought play. you were joking no. before when you mentioned Red Foo. Red Foo was at the tennis. Yeah. Well, he went out with... Uh, Azarenka? Azarenka? Oh, yeah, that's Victoria right. Azarenka for a while. Yes. But he's pretty handy on the racket. Um. But what was interesting was how many years has it been since we were shuffling? I know. How yep. many years since we were doing shot, 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 shot? Did you ask him? Did no. Did you see if L- L- LMFAO are getting back together or? No, I didn't. Um, I just. Pain in the bum. If you're sitting behind him, you can't see a thing because he still has the hair. <laughs> now, if you've moved on from LMFAO, why are you still wearing the white square glasses while you're sitting there without a lens in them at the tennis? Well, maybe, you know that, I mean? maybe, but maybe that look uh, uh, existed before the band thing or before the, I don't think it did, like Kate. the artistry. It wasn't and I, something I that I don't came think the... F- the flary shirt was also part of the look before LMFAO as well, so he's kind of still hanging on to it. But you know what? The kids, mine, were big fans of LMFAO. Now, I don't know what was going on yesterday with Red Foo, but every time I tried to film him, he just kept picking his nose. Oh, you're kidding me, so you couldn't yeah, post yeah. it? He was having a shot at his nose. Shots, shots. Well, the, ki- so- the kids would have loved that. I've just got a series of photos on my phone of Red Foo, sort of knuckle deep on his nostril. Now, I'm just, I don't know what was going on on the day, but I just thought, what a roller coaster of uh, emotions he's had in Australia since the glassing at the pub. Oh, yeah, Someone the hit him in the chef. head with a, with a schooner. Um, that was a quiet one. Um, but good to see him back in the country for the love of tennis. I just I thought he might have left the LMFAO. I mean, Kate, you don't turn up to the tennis dressed as Sally in a school uniform, do you? Do you know what I mean? Because you're not no. doing that gear anymore. I know, no matter how much you ask. <laughs> <laughs> Fits in Whipper with Kate Ritchie is a Nova podcast. For more great shows like this, download the Nova Player via the App Store or Google Play.